Hey guys, I'm here with PK at MAP Brewing Company. Why don't you tell us a little bit about you and your role with MAP and how long you've been here? Well, I've been out here in the Gallatin Valley for about 30 years okay. and I uh, have been on and off within the brewing industry throughout that period of time. Okay. And uh, it was about 2000 and I would say 13 that I decided to pursue opening up another brewery in Bozeman. Okay. Um, took a few years to get it put together, but uh, finally found this location out here and fell in love with it. And uh, it's just been a labor of love ever since. Yeah. Uh, at the time when I was starting to think about doing a brewery, I told my wife for 10 years, don't ever let me own my own brewery, but <laughs> sometimes you gravitate back towards what you love to do yeah. and, and this is it. For sure. Yeah. What's your favorite part about MAP? Well, first off, the beer. Yeah. Number one, that's the guiding principle of trying to make the best beer that we can. For sure. um, the people is another aspect of it yeah. that is always rewarding on every single day yeah. to the point whether it be employees, customers out in the field. Uh, it's just a really, really good good industry to be, to be a part of. Yeah, I think yeah. this is the first time I've ever been on this patio when there's not 192 people here. It's kind of nice when it's <laughs> quiet because it's not that quiet around here that often. Yeah. And uh, But we'll give it a half hour and we'll see what we can <laughs> exactly. get, do about that. Exactly. You know? So of course MAP is my favorite brewery, but what do you think makes MAP what it is? Well, first off, I love it that you love it. Uh, <laughs> that's what we strive for out here. You've created such an atmosphere here that just feels like a family. Thanks, and it's it's being a part of the community, and that is a major component of who we are, is knowing our neighbors, knowing their friends and family, and being a part of the community, uh, so that we know people that walk through the door. Sure. And, you can see them on a regular basis. Sure. Uh, and then also creating an environment that is welcoming to anybody coming through that door. You hopefully get to come in and say, hey, I feel at home here. Okay, now we're in the tasting room and we're gonna try some beer. We are gonna be doing a little bit of a beer tasting. We're gonna learn a lot about beer and a little bit about Loy and Matt Brewing Company. So Loy, why don't you tell us about you and your new role with Map and kind of how long you've been here. Awesome. Um, I've been at Map for three and a half years and I actually just started brewing. So I'm full-time brewing. I used to work in the tasting room. Okay. And um, I'm a certified beer judge and a certified sister, which is kind of like a sommelier, but for beer. Okay, amazing. Yeah. Well, let's get started and try some beer. And I think you're gonna teach me the proper way to not only pour, but to enjoy this beer. Exactly. Okay, yeah. great. Um, so I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about how to pour from the can into the glass. Um, so if you're at home, drinking a new beer, or this is the way I like to drink beer at home um, by pouring it into a glass. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay. Um, I do want to say that it's not necessary to the beer enjoyment to drink it from a glass. Okay. I think a lot of um, experiencing beer is situational. For so sure. if you're like out floating the river or at a backyard barbecue, like drink it straight from the can. Don't think about it. Amazing. Um, and that's a good way to enjoy beer as I well. I love it. So. Amazing. Yeah. Now, let me ask one question first. Yes. I know there's a little bit of confusion. I noticed that this glass is not chilled. Yeah. Tell me about why it's not chilled. Yeah, it's not chilled. It's rinsed um, with some cool water. So when you've got the frosted glasses, a lot of times what can happen um, when people put them like in the freezer, you can get some like residual sanitizer or cleaner that actually like freezes onto the glass oh. in that um, frosty mug. And so it can affect the flavor of the beer as you're pouring it into the into the glass because okay. it will just melt all that back sure. into the beer. So okay, it makes sense. Um, I, I always rinse out the glass first. That's okay. just also going to get any um, residual like sandy or anything. Sure. If you're here or at home, it's residual dust okay. maybe from sitting on the sure, shelf. Sure. Um, so I want to give it a little rinse. Okay. And then um, obviously we're going to just crack our beer. Perfect. And then when you're pouring it in, so you want to tip your glass to like, yep, about okay. a 45 degree angle. Okay. And when we're pouring it into our glass, we're going to shoot to hit like kind of right in the middle of okay. the glass. Um, and what we're going to do is pour it in. And as we pour it in, we're going to fill the glass about halfway okay. and then tip the glass upright. Okay. And then we can lift our can higher above the glass, depending on how much of the foam of the head we want on that beer. Sure. 
Getting that foam on the top of the beer is actually really important because it releases the CO2, okay. which helps you um, smell the beer. It helps bring the aroma out. Okay. So if you get a beer with no head on it, you're not gonna be able to get as much of that sure, aroma. Sure. And since so much of our sense of taste is coming from our sense of smell, it's really important it's really to important. have that on there. Yes, exactly. okay. All right, do you wanna do it together? Or let's should do, I? Actually, let's see you first. Okay. Yeah, let me, right. let me learn from the pro and then I'm gonna attempt. Great, so I'm gonna pour it right down the side there. Okay. And you can go as slow or as fast feels necessary. And then I'm gonna turn it upright and I'm actually gonna lift oh. it up to try and get to agitate it sure. so that I can get that head on that beer. Okay, so we've poured the beer yes. and now we're gonna taste it. So yeah. give us the lowdown on how this goes. Okay, so the first thing I like to do, and the reason I like to pour it in a glass is to look at it. Sure. Um, so much of what we can taste, we can kind of predict based on what it looks like. Mm -hmm. When I look at this beer, I'm not thinking like, oh, it's gonna taste like chocolate and coffee, sure. like a stout. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking like, oh, lighter flavors. Mm -hmm. um, the beer we're drinking today is Party, the okay. Mexican lager. Um, so really light, crisp, easy drinking lager. Some people love it with a lime. It's totally up to you. Um, so when I'm looking at this beer um, and thinking about the style, the Mexican lager, I'm thinking I might get some really light kind of crackery notes, okay. um, light bread flavors. Okay. Uh, this beer specifically has some corn in it, so okay. I might get like a little reminiscent of corn chips. Um, okay. Makes me think of like eating tacos on the beach. You oh, know, wow. So. I'm here um, for it. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, so just okay. looking at it, we can kind of think about what we're gonna be sure. able to taste. And then the next thing I do is smell it. And okay. like I said before, so much of our ability to taste is coming from what we're smelling. Mm -hmm. So I wanna take enough time to make sure I'm like getting as much out of it as I can. Okay. Um, you can just kind of like angle your glass. I have a nice German nose, so I frequently <laughs> like dunk it, which is totally acceptable. <laughs> Um, but you can kind of tilt it a little bit. And then another thing, especially with beers that are really subtle, like this beer isn't like an IPA, it's not punching you in the face sure. with, with aroma. So you can actually cover it and swirl it, which is agitating that CO2. Oh wow. And then it's gonna kind of trap all of those aromas. Okay. And then you can kind of get a little bit wow, more. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So this like smells a little sweet. It does smell sweet. Yeah, so I'm getting like, some like sweetness, a little pear maybe. I'm getting sweet too. And I can actually smell some pear when you say that. I know it's like a psychological thing, totally. but I can actually smell it. And something that's really helpful um, when you are kind of, if you want to get better at tasting beer is to just break it down and then like try and pick it apart and go through your spice cabinet, go through your you know, fruits and cra all different yeah. kinds of crackers and grains since beers made sure. from grains. That's it a has great a lot idea. of grainy flavor, but that's a good way to like, um, to kind of build your vocabulary sure. and help find sure. or put words to that. Okay, amazing. So once you feel like you've kind of got some, some good aromas out of it, okay. then that's when I taste it. Okay, great. let's do great. it. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah. So when you're tasting yeah. beer, there's like kind of three different parts, right? We get what happens right at first, we get what's in the middle, and then we get that residual, finish. that mm -hmm. finish, you know? So it finishes like pretty crisp and mm -hmm. clean. It's not too sweet, but mm -hmm. it's not leaving a ton of bitterness mm -hmm. like an IPA would. Mm -hmm. um, in the middle, we got kind of that burst of sweetness mm -hmm. there. Um, and then at the beginning, you kind of get that carbonation you that do. your tongue. Yes, I love the finish. It's super smooth. But this is such an easy drink. It's so refreshing. It's light. It's so taste. I mean, it has such great taste. It's so flavorful. Yeah. It's it's a really easy, clean drink. I love it. Totally. It's delicious. And when you break it down like this, it actually, for a beer that at first seems really simple or yeah. a beer that you can just like sit and drink yeah. a couple of them, like when you are thinking about it, it becomes much more complex yes. and like exciting. Mm -hmm. So that's for the sure. fun part about craft beer. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. So where can we find MAP beer other than in your location? Yeah, um, so it's all around town, um, lots of different grocery stores um, and convenience stores in Bozeman, Livingston. Um, it's about as far as our radius is. We have a pretty small distribution radius, but you can find us um, in, yeah, pretty much most grocery stores and gas stations. And also the tasting room is fully open now again? 
Yeah, okay. yep, so we're following county guidelines, but we our tasting room is open. So we've got in-house dining. We are still doing to go for both food and beer. Okay. You can call your order in. Um, so lots of different options of whatever people feel comfortable with. Thank you so much, Lloyd. It was so nice to get to taste some great beer and learn how to actually pour it correctly. Perfect, yeah, thanks for coming. Thank you.